Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kushan Maheshwari, Head of Investor Relations. And on behalf of India Mart Intermesh Limited, I welcome you all to the company's Q3 FI 2023 earning webinar. As a, as a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Joining us today from the management side, we have Mr. Dinesh Agarwal, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Brijesh Agarwal, Full-Time Director, Mr. Pratik Chandra, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's conference call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Kindly refer slide number three of the earnings presentation for the detailed disclaimer. Now I would, now I would like to hand over the call to Dinesh for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, Dinesh. Thank you, Kushal. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to India Mart's quarter three FY 2023 earnings webinar. First of all, a very, very happy new year to all of you. We have already circulated our earnings presentation, which is available on our website, as well as the stock exchange website. I'm sure you would have gone through the same, and I would be happy to take any questions afterwards. I'm pleased to report that India Mart has delivered a consolidated collection from customers of rupees 283 crores, a 28% year-on-year growth, and deferred revenue of 1,015 crores, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 29%. The growth was primarily driven by 24% increase in the number of paying customers, uh, paying subscription suppliers, and addition of the accounting software services segment that we acquired in the first quarter of this financial year. Continued growth momentum in the paying subscriber uh, is largely driven by recovery across the industry, and demand for the digital transformation due to accelerated internet adoption that we have seen over the last two, three years. Total traffic on the platform and the result, resulting unique business inquiries remained stable at 250 million and 22 million respectively. Our 90-day repeat buyer is standing at approximately 53-54%, represents the continued trust on the platform. On the people front, as we continue to build organization, we have added approximately 300 plus employees across sales, service, product, and technology in this particular quarter. As the team buildup is more or less commensurate with our scale of operation, we expect further increase in the employee base to be more or less in line with the growth in the number of customers. Overall, we ended the quarter on an optimistic note and expect to continue to build upon the growth momentum. The growth reflects customers' confidence in our value proposition. We will continue to invest in further strengthening the value proposition in line with our strategy. Now I will hand over the call to Prajesh to update about the accounting business, especially busy infotech. Thank you and over to you, Prajesh. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, in this quarter, uh, Busy has delivered a billing of 12.4 crores. Uh, revenue from operations of 10.4 crores uh, and uh, deferred revenue and advances uh, of 24.1 crores. The EBITDA for this period stood at uh, 1.6 crores, uh, which uh, is a margin of 16%, and the uh, PAT for the quarter was at about 2 crores. Uh, it, in this particular quarter, we have also generated positive cash flows of 4.3 crores, uh, I would like to reiterate uh, that all of these uh, numbers that we see here uh, are numbers that have come post uh, shifting towards INDAS uh, in this financial year post our acquisition. Uh, until last year, uh, this uh, reporting was done, basis gap. However, from next quarter onwards, uh, we will be able to give you comparable numbers as we will complete one full year of operations. During this quarter, we also uh, sold 5,000 uh, new licenses, uh, and that takes the overall licenses sold to uh, 3,23,000 uh, till date. Uh, we are nearing uh, completion of hiring of our uh, sales team across India. Uh, as I've shared with you last quarter, that uh, that was a priority for us, uh, you know, post stabilizing the operations. Uh, and we have also now started uh, working on growing the partner network, uh, especially to improve our penetration in the underpenetrated geographies uh, across India. 
the overall performance uh, of the business uh, is in line with our expectations and uh, we are confident uh, that uh, our objective of doubling the growth rate of the business uh, should be met um, in this financial year. Uh, with this, I'll hand over the call to Pratik so that he can discuss about the financial performance. Thank you, Brijesh, and good afternoon, everyone. I will take you through the financial performance for the quarter ending December 2022. Consolidated revenue from operation was rupees 251 crores in the quarter, registering a growth of 34% year on year. Deferred revenue during the quarter stands at 1,015 crores, an increase of a 29% YOY basis. As these figures include accounting services segment, uh, which we acquired in quarter one of this year, on a like-to-like -like basis, standalone collection from customers, revenue from operations, and deferred revenue were at rupees 273 crores, rupees 240 crores, and 991 crores, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 24%, 28%, and 25%, respectively. As communicated in the previous quarters, the company continued to invest behind growth, primarily in manpower across sales, servicing, product, and technology. During the quarter, we have added 325 new employees, taking the total employee headcount to 4,413. Consolidated EBITDA for the quarter stood at 28%. Consolidated other income for the quarter stood at rupees 102 crores. The increase is primarily on account of one-time realized and unrealized gain of rupees 67 crores on measurement and sale of investments in other entities, primarily Procmart, wherein our investing company has raised primary capital from institutional investors at a good valuation. Net profit for the quarter was rupees 113 crores with a margin of 32%. Cash generated from operations during the quarter was rupees 115 crores. This includes rupees 17 crores received as refund of tax paid for the financial year 2019 and 20. Excluding this refund, normalized cash generated from operations would have been rupees 98 crores, representing 35% of collections from customers during the quarter. Cash and investment balance during the quarter stood at rupees 2108 crores. Thank you very much. We look forward to answering the questions. We'll now begin the Q&A session. If you wish to ask a question to the panel, kindly raise your hand and allow camera, camera and microphone access, or you may type your question in the chat menu. Please restrict to two questions so that we'll be able to address questions from all the participants. We'll wait for a couple of seconds while the question queue assembles. Can you First question is from the line of Vivekanand from Ambed Capital. Vivekanand, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I have two questions. Uh, so uh, the first one is on the uh, operating metrics like uh, uh, traffic inquiries, uh, and, and, and the likes. So what we see is, uh, that for the last several quarters, this number, um, I mean, I agree that it has increased, uh, versus pre-COVID levels, but it has stagnated, um, at a certain, uh, level for the last several quarters. So, uh, my first question is to understand, uh, this better. What's, what's really happening here? Is it, uh, an indication that the demand environment is very muted or is it so that we are seeing uh, more competition? Um, I'd like to understand this better. Uh, second question is with respect to the, um, you know, the, related to the first one, which is uh, the collections growth. We, we have managed to sustain collections growth uh, at a rate um, higher than our long-term 20% guidance. Uh, just wanted to understand the confidence that you have in uh, growing your collections uh, at the same pace, uh, perhaps next quarter and fiscal 24. Thank you. Uh, let me first answer the second part of the question. Uh, because you can see the number of customers acquired or added in the last 
three four quarters has been significantly higher than our historical net customer additions and uh, obviously uh, that has result that is starting to result into uh, approximately a 25% kind of a collection growth uh, as the base effect takes uh, starts to take place and as the percentage wise uh, number of net customer addition which is about 8000 that we have uh, guided we have been guiding uh, i think this will uh, trend towards that 20% long term so that's the first part of the question uh, second part of the question on the traffic and inquiries uh, so if we look at the traffic the you know you are right there has been a significant increase from pre covid and that significant increase a lot of that was due to shortages that happened during that covid time whether it was medical or whether it was uh, other related stuff and now i guess uh, those have slowly and slowly tapered uh, down while the traffic is still maintained at uh, elevated levels uh, that is uh, coming from the other parts uh, you may be right that uh, there may be some uh, here and there economical and inflationary pressure that might have some muted demand but that's not really visible if you see the traffic even in the last quarter of september quarter was 260 million and it's just this particular quarter is holiday season too many holidays this particular quarter so you are showing a, a little bit of a downward trend but i am i am sure that this will continue to be maintained at 260 million or so thank you very much so this this is any helpful just one small follow up um, it, it... am i right in uh, inferring that the exports market uh, is very sluggish at present given the uh, global prevalent factors and uh, dinesh if you could just comment on the impact of that on our business if any thank you so, so we are uh, typically a domestic b2b marketplace and 95% of our business happens uh, 90 95% of our business happens in for the domestic market Uh, even the buyer side traffic if you go and see on uh, some of the external website which uh, give you uh, less than 10% of the traffic comes from uh, international uh, places so we would not uh, be the right party to comment on the export related business uh, in general you know last entire decade we haven't uh, been very bullish on the export but uh, fy21 i think there was a specifically some spurt on the export so it is still to be seen uh, what impacts long term impacts or a medium term impact would come on the export thank you i'll rejoin the queue thank you vivekanand next in queue is uh, abhishek bandari from numura capital Abhishek, uh, please uh, go ahead with your question. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Mm, yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, and happy New Year to everyone. Uh, sir, I just had two questions. One, you know, first is your on your other income. Uh, there is a very abnormal high number on the other income in the consolidated numbers, almost hundred crore plus. Uh, you know, uh, I could not understand uh, the math behind that because the cash balance what we have is only around twenty one hundred crore. So, if you could, you know, please help me with that. Yeah, Pratishu. Uh, hi, Abhishek. So, you know, as I uh, discussed, uh, the other income was for hundred and two crores in this quarter. it has two components one is our treasury income uh, which is a return on uh, the cash and bank balance we maintain and second is uh, the uh, gains on the strategic investments or any fair value gains that we get on that so uh, in this particular quarter there has been an one time realized and unrealized gain of rupees 67 crores coming on account of uh, the uh, sale of investments and measurement in other entities in our investments primarily procmart wherein uh, they have raised a primary capital from the institutional investors at a very good valuation 
So roughly around 50 crores gain out of the 67 crores is coming on account of that investment. And the remaining 17 crores is on account of the other investments that we have. Okay. Uh, have we sold our entire stake in this company? No, we still own 19.5% in this company. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. The second question is, you know, on the competitive intensity. So, you know, your peer, you know, which focuses more on the B2C, you know, classified business uh, has been talking about, you know, aggression on the B2B side, uh, you know, with their field staff and hiring plans. If you could share, are you seeing any rise or any, you know, threat from, uh, you know, any competition of yours, particularly on the classified business? I'm not asking about the transaction, you know, B2B. No, I don't think we are seeing any, uh, we are hearing anything from our customers or our sales team. So, uh, and uh, it's been uh, almost more than a year or so uh, ever since that uh, uh, B2B thing happened. But uh, no murmurs uh, anywhere from the customer or anywhere from the uh, sales team. So, thank you. So, and so my last question is, you know, we added around 6,200, 6,300 paying subscribers you know, this quarter, are you happy with this run rate? No, uh, as I've been guiding that uh, we will, on a longer term basis, uh, look forward to 8,000 plus customer addition per quarter, which is about 33,000, 32,000 in a year. And uh, this particular quarter, it was a one-off uh, because there was a Dashera Diwali in the same month. So there was so many less number of working days. Uh, otherwise, I'm still confident that we will still do more than 8,000 in uh, March quarter for sure. Thank you, sir, and all the best for this year. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Next in queue, we have Anmol Gar from Dam Capital. Anmol, please go ahead with your question. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Speak well. Yeah. So, a uh, couple of questions. Uh, firstly, um, on the margins levers, so we have been uh, waiting for some time on the margin levers, particularly uh, the operating leverage to play out. So, when do you think that uh, the operating leverage will start to play out uh, in the business? So, that is one. And secondly, I wanted to ask... Uh, that the uh, will the is the assumptions right that the current supplier additions that we are doing is more on the monthly basis and in the past uh, what we have seen is that uh, these monthly suppliers do get uh, upgraded over the quarters so uh, do you are you expecting uh, um, a good amount of arpu increase as well in the coming uh, quarters as well so first part of the question is that uh, uh, margin. So as I said, uh, you know, out of these 36 months of uh, COVID, the first 18 months, we did not do any investment, you know, whether it is manpower or whether it is... Uh, so because there were too many uncertainties, it is only from around the same quarter last year that we started making uh, aggressive uh, investments back uh, in market. And I think right, rightly so. Uh, so, so currently the manpower expenses uh, has gone up uh, on two counts. One, we started to hire more people and two, the average salaries have uh, shot up uh, considerably in the last uh, two years. Uh, uh, so uh, that is showing up uh, in the, uh, un from that unrealized, uh, unrealistic uh, margins that was there 44, 45% during the Corona time. If you look, uh, we are now back to that 28-29% uh, uh, margin bracket uh, pre-COVID. And now the uh, if we look look at the uh, cash flow from operation versus the collections, uh, the cash flow from operation uh, removing the, some of the one-time uh, tax refund is about 90-95 crores uh, on a like-to-like -like basis, which is started to trend in the cash margin 
slightly towards uh, upwards of 30 percent as i have been guiding on a long term target of about 33 percent or so so i think we are fine on that side but it will uh, probably take one one or two more quarters uh, before it can start to expand the second part was Monthly to uh, yeah. So uh, as we have been telling uh, about uh, one third customer come on the annual subscription and two third customer come from uh, come on the uh, monthly subscription. The monthly subscription customers have much higher churn. Annual subscription customers have a lower churn. And from monthly customers, uh, we uh, typically upgrade over a period of, period of time to annual and uh, gold. So when they move up to the annual uh, mode uh, in the silver annual or silver multi-year, the ARPU does not increase much. However, when the, uh, they move up further to the gold and platinum, then that's when the ARPU is, starts to increase. Currently, since the uh, number of customers at the bottom of pyramid is going too much, up so the ARPU increase uh, you will not see in the overall customer base whatever ARPU that you are seeing increase is the, that you are seeing in the top one percent and top ten percent customer base so in the near term uh, as long as we um, increase the customer base by twenty percent you will not see the uh, overall ARPU increase. but as uh, we start to change the mix of the customers uh, in a slightly longer period of time then you can expect a CAGR based ARPU increase of 4, 5%, 6% that we have seen in the past also. Uh, sure, thanks, Dinesh. Uh, so, just one uh, follow up on that. Uh, that um, is the, uh, the number of customers that we are adding right now. So, has the mix changed that the more than two third are being added on a monthly basis as compared to earlier, where two third were added, uh, being added on a monthly basis? So pre-COVID uh, versus now, I think we are same uh, because uh, during the COVID, the most of the churn happened in that monthly customer. Uh, and uh, we also did not prefer too many monthly customer coming and going in that time because we, we could not have signed the NATCH form, at, et cetera. So during the COVID time, most of the customer either were acquired on the annual mode are uh, churned out of the uh, so uh, the monthly bracket has monthly customer base had uh, fallen significantly by the end of FY21 and FY even in the middle of FY22. Uh, so I think we have built up back uh, again and now I think the mix is uh, back to the same level as uh, pre-COVID level. Sure, sure. Thanks, thanks for the answers. I'll join back now. Thank you, Anmol. Next in queue, we have Nikhil from Navama. Please go ahead with your question, Nikhil. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, Nikhil, we can hear you. Yeah. So I want to understand, uh, uh, especially in terms of disconnect between uh, revenue growth and employee growth. Uh, revenue growth has been in the last uh, couple of quarters really good. But if you see in terms of employee addition uh, since uh, first quarter of FI22 when we started hiring aggressively, and uh, employer count the growth has been much more higher. Just comparison like fourth quarter of 22 to fourth quarter of 21. Uh, employee count was up 44%, and even the outsourcing cost uh, has been up from 8-9% on it to 14%. So basically, what I want to understand is uh, the employee productivity or revenue per employee is definitely from uh, recent historical trend. So are you looking to increase it back to the recent trend we have seen, or you think this is steady state given we are still hiring? Okay, so uh, Nikhil, if I could understand your uh, question, right? Your question is more on the uh, employee growth number. That and last, uh, last two, three quarters, uh, the growth numbers in the employee is much more than our revenue growth. And second is growth on the uh, outsourced sales cost. Yeah, sure. so basically, 
uh, number in last six quarter has increased much more faster than uh, revenue growth. And also the outsource growth cost as a percentage of revenue uh, has increased from 89% to now approximately 13-14%. Yeah, so do not do not uh, compare them with the uh, during the COVID era. As I said, uh, if you compare them with during the COVID era, it will not be the right uh, thing. Uh, compare that with the pre-COVID era. You know, uh, first quarter of FY20, uh, uh, last quarter of FY20. Yeah. So, uh, Nikhil, outsource sales cost is essentially the cost of the uh, customer addition. So uh, you can look at the number of customers that we have added. Uh, you know that would justify maybe the increase in the outsource sales cost. It's going in line with that. In the terms of the employees, uh, you know, as uh, you know, Dinesh also said in his opening remarks, that in the last four quarters we were actually doing the catch up of the growth in the employees uh, that we haven't done in the last two years. If you go to the margin lever slide. Uh, Margin lever slide. Okay. So going forward, now we are almost done yeah. with that. So going forward, we expect our employees to increase in line with the customer growth. Okay. This year has been an aberration because this year has been a more in catch up on the investments that we haven't done in the uh, previous two years. Yeah, if you see this slide, uh, the dark blue line, dark blue uh, graph remains at the, that 55%, 56% now. So for the last three quarter, uh, it has actually stabilized uh, and the revenue growth has cat, caught up with the uh, employee growth. Okay, okay, understood. And one more question on busy. We have seen decline in the current quarter as well as margin decline in uh, last couple of quarters. I like it. 1800 uh, basis point. Just want to understand is it uh, there's some seasonality or there's some organic element as well? And how should uh, busy build a trend in quarter four uh, from seasonality and organic growth perspective? Thank you. That's it from my side. So, uh, Nikhil, uh, as we had shared, that we would be investing behind building up uh, the sales team. On the, the recording property, has uh, stopped. So that, uh, you know, we are present in markets where we have underpenetrated opportunities. So uh, the decline in margin that you see essentially is the investment in building up that team up front, which will result uh, into uh, growth in revenues or, or, you know, over the next two, three quarters itself. So uh, it is the only principle. This meeting is being recorded. See that decline there. Uh, overall, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, business that we've seen in the last nine months, vis-a-vis -vis the nine months of the previous year, uh, we are in line with our target of doubling the growth rate. So we are fairly happy and comfortable with that. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Nikhil. Next question uh, is from the line of Swapnil from JM Financial. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Swapnil, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I had two or three questions. Uh, first on the uh, traffic and business inquiries trades, like, uh, like uh, as we discussed earlier, the trends have not uh, really changed in the last few quarters. Now, is it possible that uh, you would be compelled to spend towards AMP if those trends do not change in the next few quarters? That's you my first question. Advertising and promotion. Uh, and uh, the second question is like uh, uh, we were expecting uh, we were expecting some integration benefits with busy. Uh, uh, I, I, I assume that those uh, benefits are not getting uh, captured right now. Uh, so uh, can uh, can you give some uh, indication as to when we would see those benefits uh, coming in? Uh, that's number two. And uh, number three is uh, with respect to the cash on the books. Uh, what are your plans to use that? Uh, uh, 2,100 CR of cash that that is sitting on our books. How do you plan to use, utilize that? 
Thanks. So on the traffic side, I've already answered that uh, currently uh, the there has been 30-40% gain from the pre-COVID levels. And, uh, you know, in terms of the buyer and supplier uh, side, uh, number of inquiry and everything, I think we are still comfortable. If things uh, require over the next, uh, I mean, not in this financial year for sure, if things require, we have last done the advertising in a FY16 uh, last time. I think it's been seven years. And uh, so we will, if at all, we have been guiding that uh, if at all we will do, uh, we will uh, do the brand advertising, but I don't think it will be mostly to do with the traffic or uh, something. It will be more on the brand recall uh, side. On the cash, uh, I think we have been uh, doing two things. Uh, mostly either returning money back to the shareholders as per the dividend or uh, buyback or uh, doing uh, investments into MNA. And we will continue to do the both the things uh, going forward as well. Uh, you know, our last few years of uh, cash return to the shareholders has been, uh, uh, you know, 33 CR and 46 CR, except the FY21 when uh, there was a COVID time. And I think uh, that is about uh, one third of the profit uh, pool. And this year, 130 crores. So I think uh, that will continue to happen. And uh, on the rest of it, uh, last couple of years, we have invested into busy. We have acquired uh, uh, life keeping and also invested into Vapar. So about 660 crores we have invested in the accounting segment. And uh, in case we find any other opportunity uh, suitable, then we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll return the cash. And on the uh, question of integration with Busy, uh, you know, as we had guided last uh, quarter also, uh, this year is a year where we wanted to, uh, you know, smoothen the whole transition of the management that has happened and get uh, a better control on the operations of the business. Uh, we are uh, actively discussing internally on ways and means of doing it, but uh, this is something that we would be able to start working upon uh, from next financial year only. Sure. Thanks for taking those questions. Thank you, Swapnil. Next in queue, we have Mukul Garg from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead with your question, Mukul. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? I'm good. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, Dinesh, I uh, just want to follow up on uh, the previous question regarding the employee growth. Uh, it's still a bit confused on how we should look at it. Uh, uh, can you just help us uh, the right way we should kind of look at uh, the employee growth? Uh, should we look at uh, the um, revenue per employee, uh, you know, collection per employee, or uh, is there another metric, you know, we should kind of think about uh, when we kind of, you know, view how the employee growth will uh, happen over next, you know, year uh, or two and uh, how operating leverage can play out uh, in the business based on the current employee base. Because, you know, if I look at uh, the, you know, the revenue per employee or even collection per employee, uh, you are back to, you know, early days of, uh, you know, FI21. And uh, while you obviously had a massive operating leverage gain uh, in the subsequent quarters, but now it has all reverted back. So should it be the case that, you know, your employee growth now onwards be in line with the revenue growth or uh, should revenue growth actually lead employee growth generating operating leverage? Yeah, so uh, there are two ways to look at it. Uh, one is uh, look at the employees, uh, you know, sales and service employees as a function of the number of total customers, total paying customers. Uh, approximately, um, 
for every 66 customer including the uh, leaf level service uh, and customer care person uh, and including their uh, management uh, uh, overheads management span that works out to be something like that 65 66 uh, customer one uh, one employee so from that perspective you see we we were uh, quite low on the number of sales and service employees uh, because we did not uh, backfill during the covid even if there were attrition and uh, and now the customer base has suddenly grown so i think we have done the uh, ramp up and we started doing this ramp up about four or five quarters ago and i think we are probably towards the fag end of the uh, catch up being done uh, maybe another quarter uh, 100 200 uh, people uh, we are still less uh, that's the one is there and then on you can uh, probably expect the number of employees to grow in line with uh, you know number of customers or uh, collections uh, for some time and uh, if we do not uh, get uh, a shock of uh, like last year in terms of the re-rating of employee salary uh, by about 25-30 percent then I think we should start to see the operating leverage again as we have seen in the past uh, from 71 percent in FY16 to uh, uh, you know 52 percent in FY20 to 20 and FY21 and 22 are aberration because we really did not uh, invest uh, behind employees or anything. So from 52%, we are uh, a little bit 4% ahead. Uh, but I think we should be able to catch up that in the uh, next two, three quarters. Sure. So uh, just to uh, get it right, you are saying on a ongoing basis, between 100 to 140 uh, salesperson would be required assuming seven to nine thousand uh, customer addition per quarter and uh, you know as this uh, kind of plays out uh, assuming again that uh, you don't get another uh, supply side shock in fy24 uh, and given the trajectory of your uh, deferred revenue uh, what how should we uh, view the uh, operating margin uh, next year so uh, I think the way I look at it is the uh, collection from customer and uh, cash flow from operation on a like to like basis. Uh, uh, on that side, if you see the collection from, uh, you know, the cash margin uh, had uh, gone down to about 28% and uh, 30%. This 42% is not like to like basis because there is a one time gain of tax refund of about uh, 15, 18 crores, 17 crores to be precise. If I reduce that, I think we are now close to 35% cash margin. And that should uh, reflect uh, in the revenue to EBITDA over a period of time. Great. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. I'll get back into the queue. Thank you, Mukul. Next in queue, we have Manish Gupta from Solidarity Advisors. Hi, Manish. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, I had uh, three questions. The The first question is, uh, could you talk a little bit about attrition of uh, uh, in the number of uh, paid suppliers? So if the target is to add about 8,000, I guess that is a net supplier addition target. Uh, can you talk a little bit about in the first nine months of this year, what is the gross addition and how many have attrited? That's the first question. Now, Manish, we do not uh, give out the uh, gross addition and uh, churn numbers specifically. 
we uh, give out the uh, net addition as well as the uh, general uh, gui general guideline on churn as, as we have said that uh, gold and platinum uh, they continue to be uh, churn less than 1% per month uh, however on the silver annual and multi year uh, because we have uh, started to acquire customers uh, uh, majorly in the last four or five quarters, their renewals are started to come uh, from last quarter or so. First year churn is higher, second year churn is lower, third year churn is even further lower. So they are uh, on a uh, on a average. Uh, if the customer mix remains same, it uh, remains about two percent per month, or it goes as high as about three percent per month. Uh, on the silver monthly. Again, uh, in the early uh, six months, the churns are higher and uh, later on the churns reduce. So here also, as uh, the number of customers has grown up significantly, the churns are little bit higher on the early years. And that is exactly when we were doing uh, 9,000, 10,000 customer edition, I was guiding about 8,000 and I continue to guide about 8,000. Uh, so we, uh, I think that answers uh, I'll, I'll be part of your question. Uh, yeah. Uh, my second question is, uh, could you talk a little bit about how big do you think busy could be in 10 years? How do you see the size of the opportunity? Uh, you know, uh, where, where is your market share? Uh, it's been over a year now since, you know, we acquired the company. So, uh, you know, if for long-term investors, how how do they think about how big busy could be and the rest of your accounting portfolio in about 10 years? So uh, when we look at uh, the overall accounting space in itself and we look at existing players uh, that are there and the total volume of sales that uh, they do right now, uh, you know, the overall uh, revenues of all of these companies put together is between 1,000 to 2,000 crores range. Right, and that's the current scenario. Uh, our expectation uh, on the accounting uh, piece is that with the improved focus uh, of government on uh, tax compliance, making GST you know more uh, friendly for businesses, of course, we, we time. see that over a period of time, uh, the overall usage of accounting software by businesses. Uh, will continue uh, to have a good CAGR growth in double digits uh, over the next 5 to 10 years period. And therefore, uh, if you look at that kind of a momentum, uh, one, we feel confident that uh, the accounting space in itself uh, will go ahead and, uh, you know, may uh, actually become something which is of a billion uh, dollar in revenues or more. Second, uh, when we look at the uh, average revenue per customer in the whole industry today uh, versus the value that uh, is derived by the customer. Uh, the the ARPUs are very, very low as compared to the value. We will see uh, an improvement in the ARPU also over the next decade because a lot of customers will start to adopt uh, cloud solutions, which will be uh, at a much higher cost vis-a-vis uh, -vis the desktop software product that are available. Secondly, uh, there is an increased adoption of mobile apps by these users, uh, you know, allowing for improving the outputs. So uh, that is another, let's say, key driver of, uh, you know, this billion dollar plus opportunity that we will see here in India. So we are confident that both on the uh, side of new customers adopting accounting softwares as well as ARPU uh, that is generated from each of these accounting software customers. Both will actually grow and uh, making this a billion dollar plus opportunity. It depends on how well we really go ahead and execute our plan and what share of this revenue are we able to get for ourselves. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Manish. Next in queue, we have Saram Sanil from RW Investment. Hi, Saram. 
please go ahead with your question. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions relating to the engagement metrics and an operation related question. So first of all, what is this algo change you've been talking about uh, for a couple of quarters, which is affecting the unique uh, business inquiries of India Mart? And also, uh, we can see the number of registered buyers are up 15% YOI. So the active buyers count, which is essentially the material number which we should be looking at. This has been stagnant over a couple of quarters now. Right? Why is this so? Let me ask the uh, answer the second part of the question, uh, which is the uh, active buyer. So active buyer, if you uh, look at year on year basis, uh, pre-COVID it used to be 30, uh, 29, 30 million uh, active buyers, which has now uh, gone up to 37, 38 million uh, buyers. So it has actually increased by uh, by about uh, 30 percent uh, in line with traffic. Uh, why are they not coming back again and again? Uh, why our uh, repeat rates remain at 50 per 53 percent, 55 percent? Is that the healthy rate? Is, is the 80 80 percent repeat rate is the healthy rate, or uh, that's a that's the product market fit that we continue to work upon? Uh, on the B2B side, we believe that uh, one once a quarterly repeat on an average of a large base like this is a uh, good number uh, if it is upwards of 50 percent. Uh, we are not making any changes in the algorithm to decrease unique business inquiries. We are only making changes in the number of business inquiries that are formed from the unique business inquiry to be delivered to multiple suppliers. So that number used to go, uh, used to be about uh, 5.1 uh, in FY17. We found that uh, uh, either our matchmaking was not good enough or the supplier responsiveness was not uh, enough. And we needed to introduce almost six, seven supplier per buyer in order for a buyer to receive uh, uh, three odd uh, replies and uh, relevant replies. We found that uh, now with the uh, behavioral based data that we have collected, started collecting post FY19 because of the mobile adoption of the sellers has given us enough uh, pointers that we are now able to do much more accurate matchmaking between a supplier and a buyer. And number two, the supplier's re uh, responsiveness have also gone up uh, significantly, especially post-COVID, that uh, people have adopted to internet and they have, uh, they have seen the power of internet uh, during the lockdown. So that gave us the opportunity to reduce certain competition and uh, reduce certain wastage. So that is where I think we uh, believe that we should uh, now be able to do with five odd uh, supplier per buyer, uh, which is the, which is what we continue to do. Some changes we do on a monthly basis, which that is why you are seeing some fluctuation from 5.2 to 5.3 to 5.5. But our target is to uh, go to 5.0. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That makes sense. And one operations related question is that you had mentioned on the media that margins have bottomed out. But in Q4, uh, would we still see a pressure on margins coming from the increased headcount and also higher collection that happens during the quarter? Thank you. Yeah, so when you say margins are bottomed out, you, you should see quarter uh, as compared to the previous year, same quarter, because there is a seasonality in our, uh, you know, collection and cost. Uh, the first quarter collection is lower. The last quarter collections are higher. So, or uh, you should look at the cash margin side. 
So I think a cash margin has probably, uh, uh, you know, if you look at the cash flow from operation without the tax refund, it would come down to about 95 crores or so. And that is uh, probably uh, where I can see that the margin, uh, the, the margins have bottomed out. Okay, so so we can expect Q4 to have uh, a bit of margin less than 28%, right? Because of higher yes, collection. You, you should expect 2-3% two, three, two, two, three lower. Uh, historically, that has been the trend. Sure. Okay, so thank you and all the best. Thank you, Saram. Next in queue, we have Kushak from Old Bridge Capital. Hi, Kushak. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, hi. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. A uh, few questions. Uh, first, to start with, just a follow-up on what the earlier participant asked. So uh, uh, just want to understand this line, two line items, registered buyer and active buyer. So there was a 5 million jump in the registered buyers, right? And uh, there has been decent absolute increase in the registered buyers uh, for the first nine months as well. But your active buyers have not budged at all. So uh, does this imply that uh, uh, there is an equal amount of leakage in the active buyers or how should we understand the change in these two particular line items? Yeah, that's exactly what it says, uh, that there has been leakage uh, in terms of uh, people who came. Because uh, in general, what happens uh, when the uh, every uh, now and then a lot of uh, non-B2B buyers or occasional buyers also end up coming to India Mart and put posting certain inquiry, which is who do not become a, a regular permanent uh, kind of a buyer. On a B2B buyer side, I think uh, uh, there is a lesser churn, but on an occasional uh, one time, uh, somebody make, building a house or somebody uh, you know looking for a service or a product one time, there is a churn. Uh, so this actually points to the buyer side churn. Okay, uh, so if that's the case, uh, I mean, on a nine month basis, you have almost added uh, 15 million. Uh, registered buyers, right? And uh, I mean, if if I consider that as a churn, that almost means 40-45% of the active buyers have churned, right? And you sort of say that 53% of your buyers are repeat buyers. So, yes, yeah, so I bet if 55% is repeat, then 45% is churn, right? The churn, okay. Got it. Uh, second question is on, uh, on, on that line item of uh, outsourced costs. So, uh, just trying to understand if, correct me if I'm wrong, is this sort of correct to assume that this 32 crores of quarterly run rate, uh, which you have as outsourced cost, uh, largely represents the sales hunting part through which you sort of expect to add 8,000 to 9,000 paid suppliers. Uh, is, is that right? And if that's the case, uh, 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 it, how much capacity is sitting in that 32 crore line item or 8,000 to 9,000 crores is like working on the full potential. Outsource sales cost. Yeah. This, uh, so outsource sales cost, yes, you are right that outsource sales cost primarily uh, is uh, uh, new sales acquisition uh, cost, uh, whether it is telesales or whether it is this. Now the second question is, uh, is the productivity uh, at a full, full force level? Uh, you can say that uh, we have made uh, 100 plus channel partners in the last uh, 18 months or so. And uh, and uh, uh, many of those people are uh, yet to uh, deliver better productivity. However, uh, most of the channel sales side, we only take the first six months hand holding and then they become on the per, per sale basis. So it is quite variable after uh, six months of the channel hand holding. On the pure uh, in-house sales, super sales, uh, there uh, yes, the productivity matter, but there we are not uh, adding too many people. 
uh, I think we had uh, thousand odd people there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so basically, if if that's the case, uh, does this also imply that uh, 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 that thirty two crores represents quarterly rendered represents eight to ten nine thousand crores of paid supplier addition, and hence uh, the customer acquisition cost for you guys comes to around almost. 35, 37,000 rupees, right? Which is almost like 80, 85% of your R post. So considering the churn, uh, effectively uh, uh, may, not much money is made for probably the first two years and thereafter, as and when these customers, you mine those customers, uh, uh, the large part of the OCF is made from those existing paid suppliers and within that, effectively the top 10% of your paid suppliers. Yes, of course, you know, so the, the top 10% uh, contribute about 46% of the revenue and almost 80% of the profits. Yeah, and, and also, Kushak, you know, just to add, when you uh, look at uh, the quarterly addition of 8 to 9,000 customers, this is actually a uh, net of churn customer. So, uh, when you look at, uh, you know, from an LTV standpoint, essentially, after incurring that particular cost, which you said, we are uh, yeah, you can't do the churn twice. Yeah, we are getting a customer who is paying you perpetually because you have already factored in churn in the cost there. So that that's the only correction to your hypothesis. Rest is fine. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Sure. Uh, last two questions. One uh, j- um, uh, data question uh, with respect to top 10% per- percent customers and top 1% customers. So how much of that revenues from those customers come from uh, buying leads, which is basically, you know, they generally uh, buy leads over and above their uh, assigned package, uh, uh, which forms part of their ARPUs or which forms part of their revenues. So we, broad range uh, will be helpful. Yeah, Kushagar, what we, that's a good indicator whenever somebody starts to buy lead additional to the package that they have taken, that's a good indicator that it's a time to upgrade them. So 90, 95, 98% of the people typically will have uh, uh, the right package where they will get a, a lead cost at a much more uh, reasonable because that comes bundled versus buying additional leads. Sorry, I so so for the next year, if they sort of go for the renewal, uh, based on the leads they've bought, it's already uh, packaged in their uh, 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 their offering, is it? No, I mean, uh, it, even in the middle of the year, suppose somebody has taken within platinum a star supplier package. Now, suppose we have three packages, star supplier and leading supplier and uh, uh, industrial leadership package. Now, a star supplier package comes with the... Uh, uh, between three to four weekly and fifty to hundred. So between uh, star supplier, it's a three per week per day and uh, uh, four uh, per day in the leading supplier. So if we see that in the star supplier is running at the full capacity of his lead consumption behavior, then we try and approach him to say that uh, there might be more leads and you uh, you are better off upgrading to a leading supplier package. Uh, so most of the people uh, end up upgrading because there uh, they get a certainty of lead as well as the visibility as well as the uh, direct inbound traffic. Very few people actually purchase leads in the retail manner. Okay. Okay. Got it. Understood. And last one from my side. Uh, So basically, uh, uh, you you generally have uh, commented in the past that you evaluate your investment up to one year. And then you sort of see what to do with it. Either go ahead more, uh, go ahead and invest more, or probably uh, take take some more time. So on that, uh, just trying to understand uh, uh, any update on the acquisition, especially those two, three uh, free techs, industry buying and uh, Bizom, apart from the accounting ones, where you have sort of invested more. Uh, so any plans to offer them with your existing plans or? Uh, any more rounds of funding to happen uh, and with respect to industry buying uh, uh, any progress or learnings from that investment because this is almost your second highest investment after accounting. So yeah, those were the questions from my side. Yeah, so I think uh, Bizom we continue to uh, remain uh, uh, very uh, positive because uh, 
Bizom is a scaled up business. Uh, in the FY22, their revenues were closer to uh, 50 crores or so. Uh, and they uh, they are almost uh, uh, operate at a minus 10% uh, EBITDA uh, kind of level. So, uh, Bizom, we have done, I think, third investment now. Third, third, third investment now. Uh, <clears throat> on the other scaled up opportunities is the fleet tax, uh, where uh, they have, they had, last time they had raised, uh, they are still sitting on good amount of cash. Yes, they are investing also heavily, uh, and their revenue is also growing uh, well. Uh, other than that, Vapar uh, is a one which also has raised enough capital in the last round and continue to grow well. So these are the three, four uh, uh, slightly larger, uh, larger side of, uh, I mean, slightly scaled up opportunities which are there. On the industry buying, Monotaro uh, until last year, uh, because they acquired, when, when they acquired uh, industry buying, uh, they immediately, uh, you know, COVID happened and they could not really uh, come and do make much help in the uh, now they have started to come and we have started to uh, visit Monotaro facility and do some cross learning. So on the Monotaro side, I think it's an e-commerce business. Uh, I know it remains a cash uh, guzzler, and uh, that is exactly why we wanted a, uh, a limited uh, exposure to that. And someone who has the uh, global knowledge on this and has scaled up this opportunity in some other uh, locations uh, and uh, profitably. So we believe that uh, it will take some time and it will probably require some more investments uh, every year or so, uh, but not as high, heavy as uh, the other e-commerce uh, platforms are the kind we did in the uh, Tolexo times. I think they are better than that, but in terms of growth, they are also finding it difficult. Uh, all other ones are very, very small and are still less than a year kind of a, uh, investment. Sure. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you, Kushagr. Next in queue, we have Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Rahul, please go ahead with your question. I think Rahul is yeah, not. Yeah, I think he's coming. He's coming. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead, Rahul. Yeah, uh, sorry for that. Uh, can you share uh, some of the initiatives that the company has taken to ensure that there is a reduction in churn rates over time and also uh, improvement in upscaling of subscriber from? Silver plant to much more lucrative gold platinum plants. And can you share any metrics suggesting this trend if you're already doing it? Yeah, so let me answer first the second part of the question. Uh, if you uh, see the ARPU uh, over a five year period, um, ARPU slide, <clears throat> you will see that the ARPU had uh, grown from 33,000 uh, to uh, 45,000, 46,000, and now uh, trending uh, at the similar level. So ARPU has grown at the 5% CHR. This ARPU is not uh, only at the bottom of the pyramid. This is based typically comes from the top 10% customer, which is the upgrade from silver monthly to silver annual multi-year to gold to black tenor. And also the if you we have been disclosing top 10% customers revenue uh, and for the last so many quarters. 
if you see that has grown from 40% of the revenue to almost 46% of the revenue and their arpu has also grown from 180000 to uh, now 226000 so top 10% customer while the customer base has also grown from uh, 15000 last year last to last year to 20000 now so if you compare it with uh, fy18 or fy19 we have grown from 10,000 top per, top 10 percent customer to now 20,000 top 10 percent customer uh, with uh, 175,000 RPU to now 225,000 RPU. So uh, on the churn side, uh, that is the main product uh, market fit that we continue to work upon, and uh, that is the main job that we continue to do. And there. Uh, one thing is the number of uh, buyers that you can bring and the quality of buy lead in, uh, or the RFQs that you can generate and the most efficient matchmaking that you can do. So if you see the mat matchmaking slide, we apply the supplier behavior to uh, go to, to do the better uh, searches. So if you know, the, go to the supplier behavior side, yes, this is also fine. <coughs> So uh, what we do is, uh, you know, I've given this example in the past also. Suppose there are two furniture manufacturers. And if you look at their brochure, they will typically have uh, everything from sofa to chair to tables to... Uh, but if I look at their uh, RFQ consumption behavior or uh, lead manager behavior, then we will know that they are specifically interested in a particular product not uh, though they belong to a particular industry called furniture but the one supplier a is probably more into office chair where supplier b is probably more into sofa sets so we know exactly out of the 20 items which are listed which is the, who is the specialist of what and similarly we know uh, that if this supplier is based in delhi which all places he has affinity to supply uh, similarly, the price points that he uh, is looking at and the quantities that he is interested in. So these are the things that we do so that the effort is reduced for the buyer and seller in terms of finding the right uh, uh, supplier or right buyer. And that is the main thing that we continue to do on uh, reducing the churn. Uh, right, uh, sir. Uh, just uh, one or two uh, incremental thoughts to this question. Uh, so, one you attributed that the ARPU is one metric to measure it. I, I completely agree that ARPU is one way to look at it, but I'm sure a lot of your platinum customers were born platinum because they are uh, a very big brands. And uh, I don't think they would have gone to a silver to go to platinum journey, but Many of them would have been born platinum on day one. So it's not completely addressed that aspect, uh, but I understand that there's uh, not many ways to look at it. Uh, and so uh, other way to, uh, you know, probably get some uh, dope on this is either if you could share some uh, cohort analysis over time that how many of um, your total user in, you know, year, uh, year one, to year five has uh, seen a journey in terms of churn versus upgrade over a period of time. And if you keep sharing that on a five-year basis in your uh, eight annual report. So uh, you are you are hundred percent right that uh, some of those you are hundred percent right that some of the enterprise customers may be directly born uh, you know as a platinum customer, but they are very handful in numbers. Uh, just two, three hundred uh, in numbers. Whereas when we are saying top 10% customer, we are talking 20,000 customer. And I'm sure 19,000 of them were born as a silver and then went to gold and then went, went, went to platinum. So 95% of the customer go through that same journey of silver to gold to platinum. And, uh, you know, we, we, we take a lot of pride in, uh, you know, our... Uh, upselling uh, systems that we have created over a period of time. Uh, many of the people have appreciated uh, that this is a very sophisticated system. So if you sometimes you are here, uh, we will uh, like to explain it more.
No, I'm sure I, I've been a user and I can see that how relevant it is, not today, for, but for so many years. But somehow the uh, behavior of supplier on our platform uh, is not uh, reflecting because A, I see the price point is very cheap, uh, which could not be a hindrance for a lot of people to sustain on the platform. Uh, and then we also see that how uh, matchmaking, how perfect it is, uh, even as a consumer when we try to search something as a buyer. But uh, I mean, this very high churn rate somehow is, uh, you know, not reflecting the true, uh, you know, potential. Uh, uh, that's what my reading is. Yes, you're right. You know, so Silver Monthly and Silver Annual customer continue to be a, a problem to be solved better. Uh, uh, despite the such a low ARPU, uh, there is a very, very high churn. However, once they upgrade to gold and platinum, I think uh, uh, their stickiness improves uh, uh, to almost 90% and uh, their ARPU also goes up uh, to 2 lakh rupees, upwards of 2 lakh rupees. So you are right, uh, uh, at 3000 rupees a month, why there is so much of churn uh, and we are, uh, we are yet to find a better solution there. Sure, sure. Thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you, Rahul. With this, we come to the end of Q&A session. Now, I hand over the call to management for their closing remarks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining our uh, conference call for uh, quarter three FY23. Uh, we have tried to address your queries in the time available, but if you still have any queries, please, please feel free to contact our investor relations team. Uh, last quarter is the great quarter for uh, most of Indians. Uh, so uh, wish us luck and wish you luck. Uh, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of India Mart, we now conclude this webinar. Thank you.